Okay, welcome to part two of this series. In this video, we are going to continue with the thumbnail generation code. Um, this is quite a complicated. It's the main part of the script. It's the whole point of this video. So it's quite a complicated, sort of big part. It might go over two parts, maybe three, maybe four, maybe loads. Um, but yeah, let's, let's just continue and see how far we get. So if you remember from the last part, we uh, had set up PHP here to um, not abort the script if the user presses stop or browses away from the page or closes their browser window. Uh, we set the time limit to 120 seconds because that should be more than enough to process any very large image. Um, I think by default this is something like 10 seconds, is it? It's quite low anyway. Um, and then we set the memory limit to something just high for a very big number, more than you'd ever need for this. I um, should just quickly say that some server admins will have disabled some of these functions so if you get an error like um, this function is disabled for security reasons um, you just need to remove this function and hope it works without it I mean you shouldn't need more, it depends what the memory limit is uh, I've seen some servers that have set up to just use 2 meg which is probably quite a, not, mm, quite a lot too little for this kind of thing so you'll have to just try that out and see if it works for you Okay, so um, once we have set up PHP, we want to um, make sure that the image is valid. Now, if you remember before, I have mentioned that the get image size function should not be used. Um, f just for this, I will be using it. The reason that it's not good for file uploads is that people can produce an image that has PHP code in it, which could be uploaded. Um, for this, though, you you personally won't have one of those images on your server and even if you do it wouldn't really matter because all we're going to be doing is creating a thumbnail from it. So um, just for the purposes of this video, so at the moment anyway, I'm just going to use the get image size function. Um, partly because we need the output from that function anyway, so it's sort of a byproduct that we're able to check if the image is not an image. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is set the new variable source uh, size equal to get image size uh, the path to the image we had in get um, image like so. Then we're just going to check if this is returned false. If it has, uh, we're going to show an error and just kill the script. Um, so we're going to do it if source size yeah equals false. I'm just going to kill the script here using the die function, and we're going to show a message saying. Um, that does not look like an image. Um, the reason I'm using die here is because this isn't part of a HTML page, and also we want to stop the script. I mean, it would make a little bit more. It wouldn't make sense to use this for like a login system. You wouldn't want to kill the script and tell the user that their password was wrong. That'd just be silly because you'd lose all of the HTML. Like you'd use the end. You'd lose the ending HTML tags and stuff, and the rest of your layout. Uh, but just for this, this would only happen if someone is trying to mess with the system. Um, so if I go to our browser and just hit this, you see we get no output. If I just change that, uh, no, if I change that to gallery.php, so we get this does not look like an image. The only time someone will ever see this message and the script will end is is when they try to deliberately get to a file they shouldn't be allowed to access or to deliberately cause some PHP errors. So just for this, we're using die here. Um, normally, you shouldn't use die to just display an error message, but um, in this case, we are because, well, for the reasons I've explained, it seems forgivable. Okay, what we're going to do next is define two variables: the thumb width and the thumb height. These are going to control the width and height of the thumbnail. Um, we use these in quite a lot of places in the following code, that's why we're defining them as variables, just to make it easy, like say if you want to change the size of a thumbnail. Like earlier I realised that my thumbnails were huge, so uh, I'm just going to define these two variables. Thumb width th equals 250 and thumb height equals 200. Just quickly line these up, like so neater so now we have those we can use them later on and they're pretty easily visible I mean say if you wanted to set it to 150 by 125 
you could easily find that part of the code and all you have to do is basically type in some new numbers. It's not too complicated. You don't have to like go through following out following out, you don't have to <laughs> go through following the code and replacing all the two hundred and fifties with hundred and twenty fives. Um you just literally have to change these two variable values. Right, so the next thing we want to do is create a GD good image resource from the source image. Um, and you have to call a different function um, to create that image depending on the image type. Um, so we need to know what type of Im image we have. Luckily, the um, get image size function uh, also returns the image type. Uh, I'll just demonstrate that. If I do print underscore r source size size, like so, and go back to our page, go back to the image, hit reload, you see we get this array output from the um, get image size function. Uh, it has this many keys, four, I think, five bits is one of them for some reason. Okay, so the first key is the width, the second key element is the height, the third key, uh, mm, I have no idea what that one is. That'll be something. <laughs> um, anyway, this one is the um, sort of a string you can use in an image tag. It's the width equals and height equals. Bits is a number of bits, like 8 bits, 16, whatever. Color depth sort of thing. Um, mime is the mime, pa mime type, which we are going to concentrate on. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, use this mime type to um, decide which function we're going to use. Oops, that's not where we want to be. I'm going to be back to our code. Just remove this, and we're going to do an if, else if, if, blah 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 statement. Uh, so let's do if um, source size mime equals image slash jpeg. So this would work for any kind of file name, even if the file extension... I don't think the MIME type there is based on the file extension. Um, so even if the file extension was wrong, you'd get the right type here. I mean, if you're really concerned about this, because obviously these images are going to be supplied by you, so just supply ones that work. But um, if you're really concerned about this, you could sort of process the file directly to get the actual MIME type. Um, I'll probably do a video on that as well at some point, but there isn't one at the moment. Okay, so if that something else if whoops else if source size mime oh dear oh dear again equals image slash png do something else else if source size mime equals image slash JPEG. Do something else. So in this block at the top, we want to create an image from a JPEG, in this one from a PNG, and in this one from a GIF, not another JPEG. Okay, so what we're going to do here is set the source variable equal to image create from uh, JPEG. What that does is creates a GD image resource from um, a file, a file name. So what we're going to do is basically just that. We're going to give it the file name, which was in the get variable the image, like so. And then we're just going to copy this and paste it into each of these. The other functions we need to use for a PNG image is image create from PNG, and for a GIF, image create from GIF. They all work in the same way. Um, they just have awkwardly different um, files, file names, function names, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's that done. Um, what you could do here is have like a else statement and then you could redirect with a header to um, an image like a cross or something that just sort of indicates that the, thumb, the image is not supported. Um, but we're not going to do that for this video. Um, I believe my script that you can download from my website that I mentioned before uh, has that functionality but we're going to leave it out for here for this okay so once we've done that uh, we need to um, define two aspect ratios um, we're going to use that to work out if the um, 
uh, like which way the image best fits into the thumbnail, uh, Im uh, smaller thumbnail image. Um, it'll make sense in a moment. Um, the aspect ratio, we're going to define it anyway, as the width divided by the height. Uh, I'm just going to round that off to one decimal place as well. Um, I've experienced a few problems before when you get like recurring numbers, um, it causes a few problems, so it makes just a bit of sense just to round it down, or round it to whatever, you know, not round it always down, just round it. So we're going to do that now, we're going to find the source aspect variable, which is going to be equal to round, the round function by the way, takes two parameters, the first one is the thing you want to round, and the second one is the number of decimal places you want to round it to. By default, without supplying the second parameter, it'll just round, round it to the nearest integer without any decimal points. I guess it's sort of like it defaults to zero, I suppose. Okay, so what we are going to be rounding is something in brackets, and we're going to round it to one decimal place. And this thing in brackets is going to be the source size, zero, which was the width, if you remember from the array we printed out. Uh, and we're going to divide by the source size, again, source size, oh, I should call it that, sounds very cool, uh, 1, which was the height. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing again for the sort of defined thumbnail size, we should call that thumb aspect, um, aspect equals round, again, something in brackets, one decimal place, and that something is going to be uh, thumb width divided by thumb height thumb width divided by thumb height, like so. Okay, so that's that done. Um, and then we're going to use this to work out if the image is higher, as if it's like it's taller image than the thumbnail, in terms of shape, not necessarily size. And also we're going to check if it's wider and if it's the same size. They're the three conditions that we're going to handle. Um, if it's wider, we're going to... if it's... yeah, if it's higher, sorry. If the th um, yeah, if the image we're processing is higher in terms of shape, like those wallpapers I had from the first video, they were higher than the thumbnail. They were more tall than they were wide, and the thumbnail was wider than it was tall. Um, okay, think of it as landscape and portrait, but no, don't think not quite. But yeah, that kind of works. Um, so for an image that is higher then the thumbnail, what we are going to do is match the thumbnail size to the um, like image size, we're going to resize the image to the width of the thumbnail and then crop off the top and bottom. If the image is wider, we're going to match it, we're going to match the um, thumbnail size to the height of the image and crop the sides. If it's the same size, we're just going to match it to the size and not crop anything. So the three conditions we want to check are if um, if the source aspect is less than the thumb aspect, this means that the image is higher, more is more tall than the aspect than the thumbnail. And we're going to do else if uh, the sort of the opposite of this, which is source aspect is greater than thumb aspect, not home aspect. Uh, and what that means is the Im image is wider in terms of shape again and then if not if neither of those that means it's equal which means it's the same uh, same shape so in each of these blocks we are going to sort of define the size of the the new size that we're going to resize our source image to and then we are going to define the position that we're going to start copying from that will become a bit more clear when I get to the image copy resampled function. Um, so just follow along and it'll make sense as we get further along. Okay, so I'm going to do that in the next part. Thanks for watching and now I've got to wait for this um, video to upload. Because I'm, oh maybe not in this video, but the previous video was over 800 megabytes because um, of all the images that I kept scrolling through. Okay, so thanks for watching and join me in part 2 or 3 whatever part I'm up to now, um, where we will fill in each of these and maybe just finish, because after that it's quite simple. Okay, so thanks for watching and join me in the next part.